Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we'll um, get started. Um, let's let's just pray. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Father, we, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this time. Or even as we uh, come before you, Master, we pray that you would write your word upon our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would quicken uh, our hearts, Lord, uh, quicken your word to our hearts, Lord. We pray that there'll be a line upon line, precept upon precept. We pray that it'll be a time of edification in the inner man. And um, yes, Lord, I just pray that um, it'll be a time of empowerment and a release into all that you have for us, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> um, you know, one of the things that we see in... Uh, Daniel chapter um, two. Um, Daniel chapter two. Well, it's um, after um, Daniel reveals the secret, and uh, or God reveals the secret to Daniel about the king's dream, and this is what Daniel actually praises God, and he says that uh, blessed be the name of a God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are His. We are, we are doing. We are reading verse twenty, chapter two. Right now, wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. Okay, so just declaring the omnipotence of God, he declaring the omniscience of God. Says the wisdom and might are his. He changes the times and the seasons. He removes kings and raises up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding he reveals deep and secret things he knows what is in the darkness and light dwells with him okay so just declaring the attributes of god which is which is really wonderful right he's saying that god you know this is who you are wisdom and might are yours you change times and seasons you know so something that is not um, that we can attribute only to god so when it comes to wisdom when it comes to might we can say okay man is mighty to some extent nothing compared to god man has wisdom uh, nothing compared to god but you know he's talking about change in times and seasons which are only um, in god's eyes which are only in god's hands uh, and we when we look at the political landscape <clears throat> what is happening in a nation and sometimes we think god we get so frustrated rod you know what is happening what is happening around why and and like the psalmist, you know, why are the righteous, why, why are the unrighteous prospering? You know, we might cry out, but the fact is that God is sovereign, right? Uh, it is not outside of his control. It's not outside of his uh, ability, right? Um, well, in our finiteness, we think, we see things, and we see that, okay, things are really going haywire, but then... God is a God who is in control. Okay, He is who He is. Uh, wisdom and might are His. Times and seasons are in His hands, and He changes it. Right? Praise God! We have such an amazing, awesome God. Right? Um, <clears throat> so today, we, uh, as we look at um, uh, life skills, we are in um, chapter eight. Right, we looked at evaluation. We looked at people organizing people, and we were looking at several things when it comes to organizing people about motivating. Uh, I mean, right from um, uh, understanding how people are uh, important for our success. Um, no one, none of us, uh, can do things on our own. We can go a certain. Uh, distance, we can have a certain level of success on our own, but ultimately, especially when it comes to ministry, we see that it is for people, it is about people, and it involves people. Right? Um, and the and the greatest thing is that when we look at God Himself, right, uh, the Lord is so gracious, gracious enough to involve us in His plans and purposes. Just just think about it. You know, involve us in this whole uh, work of redemption, right? 
we when we study about the holy spirit we see that the holy spirit is the one who conveys the holy spirit is the one who brings transformation the holy spirit is the one you know and the word of god bringing about new birth and, and all that yet he involves us he invites us to participate with him in this grand scheme of redemption and uh, and in that we find our plan our purpose and right? our joy our contentment right so the lord involves us okay so also you know the work of ministry the work of whatever we are it involves people okay and so involving people working with people uh, we need to have those skills like we studied you know, we, these are some some things are natural abilities people might have but we need to if not if you don't have those abilities we feel that okay we are falling short in this right um, then we need to definitely um, improve those skills you know and and it comes by recognizing what is it that I need to build on what is it that I'm uh, ignorant of that I need more information on and stepping out and you know utilizing that okay so we looked at organizing uh we looked at vision and uh, delegating tasks uh, how to do that what not to do right uh, and when it comes to inspiring people you know people people are not machines and right? people do get discouraged people do uh, get distracted people do uh, get out of focus and a lot of things happening in their lives right people are emotional beings and so on so um, there is this role of when it comes to people's skills there is this role of inspiring and motivating like understanding that yes people are not there fully there emotionally people are not fully there there's something happening um, that uh, that requires our intervention right so there is a need sometimes we need to inspire and motivate despite the way whatever we are going through right uh, we need to kind of set that aside and say okay this is what we are going after as a as a team as a ministry so um, you know we need to actually step in and motivate and inspire and so on okay. we also saw that we needed to evaluate and right? appraise uh, or assess and see how people are doing their work okay um, and so when we assess it is for the benefit of the organization or the ministry or for the for the effectiveness of the task right whatever task we are unless we evaluate uh, from our, our timely evaluation of frequent evaluation you know, uh, we will not be able to uh, reach that point reach that destiny or we will not we will not know okay is there effectiveness is there course correction? Do we need to change things, do things differently? We will not know that unless we evaluate, assess. Okay, And with evaluation comes feedback. Or you're reviewing things and you're sharing, saying, um, this could be better or this is great. Please continue on what we are doing. Right? So evaluation. So evaluation is also, a important, also an important skill because truth needs to be spoken with love. Right, so um, that's again an important skill, right? Because um, your whole your whole system, emotions, everything might be screaming, might want to scream at the other person, but we need to, you know, calm down and give a very objective feedback, right? So um, it it also involves sharing of feedback, involves managing our own selves, our own emo emotions. Then we started with the last part, which is, you know, letting go, which means that there are several reasons why we might have to let go of people, whether in our own teams, whether in our organizations, um, we might have to let go of people. Okay, so what is what is the, the reason? The reason being that maybe the, their, their scope of their ministry, the scope of their task, is much bigger than what you can accommodate or what you can offer uh, in the team or, or the organization, right? So you you sense that okay, their scope, uh, their call for something bigger, there's a call for something greater, and um, in the season where you are, or the or in the season where the church is, where the ministry is, you know, uh, you cannot 
you need it's time to let go so that they can go on to fulfill the call of god purpose of god right um, we also let go when there is um, when we assess and see that there is no fruitfulness okay obviously it doesn't mean that the first time when we see um, you know uh, there is no productivity right um, that we just say okay bye you know this is the end of it let's shake hands let's part as friends no we don't do that then right um, there is a uh, there is time given there is feedback given time for change and uh, you know uh, we could we could follow this three strike policy meaning that you give at least two warnings with the warning you come with feedback and say okay next time this happens you know we will not be able to uh, we will not be able to you know uh, so this is a strong thing like right? there's a strong action that will be taken um, so so why is there a fall of productivity you know we need to understand that is it because of uh, ability lack of ability right then uh, there can be training there can be learning right is it lack of ability is it lack of uh, lack of tools right again goes with the, the equipping it can be provided or like we saw last time is it lack of uh, or is it lack of attitude right is it, is it an issue of ability or is it an issue of attitude uh, if, if it's an issue of attitude then it's going to be a lot difficult right um, learning we can always train a person equipping we can always equip a person the person is teachable but if it's a question of attitude saying this is all i have to give uh, i i cannot go any further i will not rather right then it becomes a problem so then definitely you know there needs to be a conversation and say okay um, this is the time frame and uh, maybe we'll give you all the support, we'll give you all the help that you need, but things need to change, okay? And um, when it does not change, when it continues, it should not come as a surprise for the person that the person is asked to go, right? You've given enough time, you've given um, enough, uh, enough warnings, right, about the consequence. You've told them and this will be the consequence, right? And uh, you've shared that, and uh, maybe it's a good idea to share it in writing, right? And not just leave it in words. Maybe the first time you can have a conversation and say, you know, this is something serious, something that's affecting the team, affecting the organization, um, and uh, it needs to change, right? So we you give it and also follow it up, maybe through an email or a letter so that the person has a record. You have a record. The other person also has a record, um, but things if things don't change, then obviously it has, the person needs to be needs to let go. So letting go, we can do it with grace. Okay, um, I remember in an organization where I worked in a sales organization, this letting go was always in a very very bad taste. It was always done in a very bad taste. There was a lot of hurtful words exchanged. Uh, the boss really, you know, uh, spewing venom, right, on the person and then saying, okay, this is what a terrible thing and, um, and all that. And then it was done, right? And and in most cases, it was there was no relieving letter. There was no, you know, uh, letter of appreciation, nothing. So it was just, the person was just, you know, cut. it didn't even have to, have to be that. It should not be that. It can be with grace. It can you honor the person? Do it with dignity. You know, don't destroy the dignity of the person. Don't destroy the person. But you know, just come to their understanding. Hey, it's not working out the way. Uh, either with the skill, either with the attitude, it's not working out. Maybe the person can actually do with the same level and everything. You know, maybe the person can do a good job elsewhere. But there, uh, in that organization, understand that you are a steward. At the end of the day, right? Um, steward of the resources, right? Steward for for fruit. Right? The 
the Bible talks about in uh, John chapter 16, right? John chapter 15, where the Lord says that he's looking for fruit. And where there is fruit, there is pruning so that it can be even more fruitful. So the Lord himself is looking for fruit because he has made himself available. He's given himself for us. Uh, he's given his, the resources, the word, the spirit of God and everything. So there's nothing lacking. Right? He's made himself available. Um, and so with all that, John 15, right? And saying, I'm the vine, you are the branches. And is looking for fruit right so it's it's after all that that he's looking for fruit we need to understand and it's not that you know alienating you fend for yourself i will still look for fruit no is is given all that identity connection fellowship support and looking for fruit um so so looking for fruit is not a, you know sometimes we think it's a worldly thing you know, how can you say that all the corporates are doing that Hiring, putting pressure, firing. You know, when targets are not met, right? But know that it's a biblical thing. But it's done in a very graceful manner, right? Where the Lord is looking for uh, fruit and it's with connection, it's with fellowship, and it's with the Zoe God kind of life flowing in and through us. And the Lord looks for fruit. So, which means that when we, you know, we, have we given all? Have we given enough support? Have we given given enough guidance uh, for this person? Have we skilled them? Have we, you know, um, uh, equipped them? Have we given them the right tools? All those questions, you know, we need to ask, and our conscience needs to be clear, right? So we are doing the right thing. I'm accountable. At the end of the day, I'm answerable. So, you know, you let go, release the person. Okay. Any questions? So it's not it's not the well it's 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 not the enjoyable thing, right? It's um, the other day I was talking to a, like a working I mean the CEO not CEO I think it was the vice president. So he was saying how we had to shut down an entire division, um, like it was a downturn in the economy. You know we had to shut down. He has to um, well release so many people, hundreds. But he had to do it because the company had decided, and you know, so it's a very tough, tough decision. It's not the most enjoyable of things, but um, yeah, so that's something that we need to do, and it, and, and it comes within that whole thing of uh, people skills, right? People management and people skills. Okay. Okay. If there are no questions, we'll we'll go on to chapter nine. Okay, chapter nine which deals with conflict resolution. Okay, another big one. <laughs> so um, conflicts, okay. So when you say conflicts or interpersonal conflict, um, it normally starts as a you know, conflict. When you, when you look at the word conflict, it means, it means a violent, something violent, something like a struggle, a battle, uh, a conflict, armed conflict. We use all those words, right? Um, but uh, when we when we see, you know, it's maybe they don't see eye to eye, and uh, that's how it starts. Or it could be a misunderstanding, right? So, and from there, it grows, it escalates into something that we would call as a conflict where there is a lot of stress there is a lot of animosity sometimes um, the communication breaks down at times where you know there's there's no communication like people are not communicating with each other uh, they're working together uh, or they're supposed to be but there's no communication there's there's like a cold war right you can and we know it happens in families People say, I, you know, I've not spoken to my brother, or I've not spoken to my siblings in years. Are you shocked? Why? Yeah, because of, uh, uh, you know, we had a major conflict, major uh, disagreement. There was a war of words. Um, there was a lot of. Sometimes it it becomes a physical act, this violent act, and then 
then it becomes a conflict, right? So conflict can be just a cold war. There's nothing, no exchange of words. But also it can be the opposite of that. It can be a lot of exchange, a lot of exchange of words, blame, right? It's a conflict. Now, resolution of conflict uh, also is a skill that we need to um, we need to learn. Uh, it's something that we need to, uh, if we don't have, we need to develop because it helps the teams, it helps the organizations. Um, and if there is conflict, the outcome of a conflict will actually undermine the progress of the organization or the team. That's for sure. Now, we cannot say that, OK, with the ongoing conflict, we'll, we'll still be 100% uh, effective and so on. One day it'll just give way, right? So it um, it, it actually uh, lowers the effectiveness of teams. It um, you know because the person is constantly thinking, okay, how can I get back at this person for what he said, or what she said, what he did, what she did, right? So so we need to uh, work at resolving conflicts. Okay, so now. When we think of conflicts, our main thing is maybe some, you know, we are built in such a way that uh, we want to avoid conflicts because it's it's not a it's not a comfortable thing, right? So we just want to avoid it at all costs. We, don't, we pretend sometimes it's not there, right? Um, but then we need to be able to confront conflicts. What does confront mean? You know, you face it head on. Uh, even though you know it's not the most pleasant of situations, we need to be able to face it and address it so that it doesn't. Uh, it's addressed. It's it's rooted out, right? Okay. Looking at three main types of conflicts. Okay, one is personal or relational conflict. So, you know, they say it's it's, it's mainly about identity, self-image, or pride. Okay. Or it could be a um, uh, you know, breakdown of loyalty, right? betrayal. So personal, at a personal level, or relational conflict. Um, and the, so it's labeled as personal or relational conflict. The second one is instrumental conflict, which means it's about goals. It's about process, processes. It's about procedures. OK, so it normally happens. Uh, when there's a team, when there's a set of guidelines, when there's a set of rules, um, rules are not being form, followed by maybe a person or a group of people, then there's conflict, right? So these are instrumental conflicts. Okay. The third one is uh, a conflict of interest, which means that um, uh, you know when it when it's about uh, uh, achieving certain goals or uh, when it's uh, about priorities and so on um, so when there is a when there is a disagreement uh, when we call it a conflict of interest okay uh, how should resources be spent how should time be spent um, how should the organization staff what should they do what should they not do you know there's a conflict of interest right okay so let's look at uh, how can we? Um, are there some strategies for dealing with conflict? No, it, it's it's good to understand that. Okay, I can I can use some of these things in in conflicts so that I can resolve it. Okay. Uh, so first one is either you compete or fight. You know, compete or you know you you get involved in it. Okay. So in this, there is a very it's a competitive thing. It's a it's a you it's you're drawn into a fight, and um, usually it's win lose in the sense one person wins, the other person loses. Okay, and uh, uh, which means the you know the strength of the power and strength and ability of the one person overrides, um, and uh, you know it does it have a place? Uh, well, yes. You know when when there's something which is totally unrighteous. And uh, you know that you know you're doing the right thing. It is a it's a question of integrity and so on. You know there where you go ahead and you know you need to maybe you, you time is in short supply and you need to do it right. But the thing is, we need to understand that the one person who has lost 
is still in the relationship. Okay. Um, and then something needs to be done to address that because the person who's lost is hurt. The person who's lost is, um, you know, it's still there. Maybe you're just facing, you're still, you know, uh, talking to that person. So something needs to be, we cannot pretend that, well, everything is okay. I won, you've lost, everything is fine. You know, there, there needs to be something to mend that relationship. Okay. It will definitely result in hurt of emotions. So if something can be done to mend that relationship, that'll be that'll be good. Right. The second one is a collaboration. Okay. So what does it mean to collaborate? It means to work with, work alongside, work through something. Now, this is the ideal thing, right? It will always result in a win-win kind of a situation, but needs a lot of time from both those parties, right? Both who are involved in a conflict. It, it requires a lot of time to work through those difficulties. And uh, and it could be very intense. Um, it could be emotionally draining, physically draining, right? Uh, you're talking about things, you're addressing issues, and you know a lot of oh, things are dug up. And uh, but if 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 one can choose, if both the parties can choose and say, okay, we we'll, let's work through it, let's collaborate. Okay, then it it results. It's the best possible way to resolve a conflict collaboration. Okay, the third one is compromise or negotiation, where both the parties or maybe one party they take a step down and say, okay, I'll compromise. Okay, I don't want to. Um, you know, it, it'll be like most likely like a draw, right? So both parties are not getting what they wanted, but they're settling for something less, right? So it's not the most ideal of things, but then it's fine. So in, in this case, um, there could be a sense of uh, dissatisfaction, right? Um, we have given up something we have met midway maybe that's not the best thing that's not what we really wanted but then we've compromised um and then uh okay you know something that's not jeopardize the relationship working relationship and you've kind of compromised on it okay so in this case what happens is um you know when you when you've compromised and you want to now move move and work towards okay what we decided on they may be less buy-in to that, right? Um, there could be less uh, satisfaction. There could be dissatisfaction. People are saying, "Okay, oh, this is not what we wanted. Why are we, you know, why are we even putting our energy into it?" You know, so uh, people need to come to terms with that and work. So that is the out fallout of a compromise or a negotiation, right? Then some of the extreme cases, denial, right? We forget that, okay, conflict, what? There's no conflict. I'm fine. You're fine. You know, just deny the whole thing. Deny the problem and uh, uh, pretend that there's no problem. Um, well, this is this is okay for a time being. Like, this is okay for a time being so that the situation can be diffused, right? But understand that it will come back again. This issue will come back again. It's not, it's, it's a very uneasy calm. Right? It's a very uneasy kind of a peace. Um, understand that it will come back again. Maybe it was, the situation was diffused. It was getting to be very bad. Uh, so maybe it was avoided. But that doesn't mean that it won't come back. It will resurface. It will come back. Okay. Then lastly, uh, smoothing over the problem. Okay, so smoothing all the problem is like people are saying, okay, it's fine, it's fine, let's 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 move on. Like you know, typically it's like maybe it's um, you know in the family or a, on a marriage, um, the husband and wife are saying, okay, you know, at least for the sake of the children, we need to you know just move on. Right, um, we not address the issue, not address the problem, but you know for the sake of the children, for the sake of you know what will people say. You know, for the sake of the family, uh, for the sake of our pa parents and in-laws, you know, let's just maintain a sense of calm and let's go on. So the problem is here is not addressed. The issue is not addressed. It's kind of smoothing over the problem. Uh, again, you know, um, uh, it again needs to be um, 
it, it's something that needs to be resolved. Like there is conflict. Okay. Um, so these, if you put that in a in a grid, right? This is what we see. Right? If, if, the, if there's a concern for self, concern for others, on the x-axis we have concern for others, y-axis concern for self, right? And if you see that, right, if if the concern for others is high, if the concern for self is also high, then it results in a collaboration, right? So we are willing to put in that time and effort uh, because. I want the best for you. I want the best for me as well, right? So we're willing to talk through, work, uh, work through things. Um, if the concern for self and the concern for others is low, very low, there's usually just a denial. Okay, and and so on. You know, we see that grid. So uh, this is this is something that's useful for us to understand. You know, it's it's a lot of theory. It's, it's just theory, but then it's it's good to understand that. Okay, uh, if the concern for self is high and the concern for others is low, then we will fight. Uh, it's a survival. I, me, myself, I need to get it at whatever cost. It doesn't matter if the other person is hurt. If the other person is, um, you know, feeling bad, doesn't matter. Right? We resolve it in that manner, and and so on. Okay. Right. Okay. So some skills for handling conflict. Okay. Um, firstly, um, the important thing is assertiveness to be assertive uh, without aggressive behavior. Right? To assert, which means to say that hey, this is this is the situation, this is what it is, and to be able to articulate it or express our views. Clearly, firmly, objectively, right? Without aggression, you know, aggression involves a lot of emotion, right? Uh, we're feeling we're, we are giving vent to our emotion. So, can we be assertive? Can we talk clearly? Can we talk, uh, you know, uh, objectively? State the facts without blaming the person. Um, and to help that is this kind of a uh, you know, statements like saying, when you said this, this is how I felt. Or when you said this, when you did this, it made me feel. You, when you did this, you know, so it made me feel. So when you said, this is what happened to me. So it's much better than saying, you are always doing this to me. Saying you are always aggressive. You are always doing this. Uh, whenever you talk about this issue, this is how you do it, right? So rather than saying, you know, when you when you actually said this, when you brought it up, this is how I felt. I felt hurt, right? I felt very upset when you did this, when you said that, right? So this will this will actually help us to voice it. Voice the same thing, whatever happened, uh, in a better way, without without blaming. Uh, you're you're actually describing the situation. Um, we are expressing our, our feelings, etc. But we are also specifying objectively. Okay, this is this is something that we can do. It will help us, right? Um, so uh, emotions. We are emotional beings. We are wired that way. Some are more emotional than the other. Right? It's, it's amazing how some people can really remain very calm. Okay? A lot of things are happening. A lot of things are being spoken. Uh, they're irritating, but then the person is remaining very calm. Right? Um, so we don't have to like leave our emotions, but can we manage our emotions? Right? It is. We are feeling angry. We are feeling there is a sense of injustice. These are good. These are good indicators. This it's it's showing us something is wrong, right? Pain is showing us something is wrong. Um, but you can choose what kind of emotions to actually give vent to, right? And how you want to express those emotions, you can decide. Uh, I actually wanted to just show us on video, which talks a little further about the same thing. Um, let me just pull that up. 
um, okay. um, just give me a second. Um, any questions in the meantime? I think that you might um, have. Questions? Um, okay. Okay, so this one talks about how we can see basically the, at the very foundation level, conflicts start with mis disagreement or misunderstanding, right? So we're just talking about disagreement, how we can disagree, right? Uh, and not see eye to eye, but we don't have to argue, which will escalate it to uh, another degree or another level. Right. So it's talking about prevention. It's talking about how we can do that. OK, so let's um, it's a small video. Let's look at that. Um, OK. Hi, I'm Edward Musio, CEO of Group Harmonics, and I'm going to tell you how to disagree, but don't argue. Have you ever been in utter disbelief at somebody else's interpretation of something? Maybe you and a fellow manager are walking out of a meeting you just attended about company revenue. But let's say you and this manager have to come to some conclusion on what to tell your shared staff. You need to make sure your disagreement or your different perceptions don't turn into an argument or a situation where you're digging in your heels, getting emotional, and unable to come to resolution. To do that, you need to know something about where that reality came from. This is a model I call the five building blocks of reality. We start over here on the left with number one, information. You just attended a presentation about revenue. There was a presenter, and there was some data. And those two things together make up the objective information that you just saw. Next over here is the situation. This is all about context. In other words, who else was in the room? What was the history versus the current data that was presented? Whatever background information is important goes with the context. Now skip over here to the far right side. At number five, we have beliefs. I'll draw this as a thought bubble. It's really just the contents of your own mind. Maybe you believe your industry is a growth industry and your colleague believes it's a shrinking industry. Those are different beliefs. Those lead to different approaches. Approach is how you think things should be done. Your belief in a growth industry might lead you to take an aggressive approach toward new product releases. Your colleague's belief in shrinking profits might lead to a more conservative approach. Here in the middle, where everything comes together, we have the interpretation. The interpretation is the answer to the big question, so what? What does it all mean? As you can see, we have it, the information coming from out there, and we have you, what you brought to the party in here, coming together in interpretation. How do you use this model? to keep your disagreement from becoming an argument? Two simple rules. First, you need to define the need for agreement. This means get very specific about what you need to agree on. You and this other manager need to come to some conclusion as to what to tell your staff. That's all. You don't need to agree on management philosophy or the future of the world. Keep it as narrow and as focused as you can. Second, use the five building blocks of reality to discuss what you're discussing. Be very overt. In other words, you're going to start with information. These are the facts I saw. These are the facts you saw. What else is on the table? We're talking objective facts here. Now let's move into situation. These were the contextual cues that were important to me. I noticed this was the history, et cetera. What did you see? Now move to interpretation. All of this led me to this conclusion. What was your conclusion? If you can, if you can get to your specific need for agreement here, stop here. Don't go any further if you don't have to, if you can get your agreement. If you have to, you can go on. You can move over here to approach and start talking about things like, I seem to be taking a more aggressive approach. You're taking a more conservative approach. How do we reconcile those? You can even go all the way to beliefs. If you do, be careful. It's tough to figure out your own beliefs, much less other people's. But you can try. You can certainly say, I tend to believe we're in a growth industry. What do you believe? And see where you get. 
it won't get you an answer every time, but if you focus on a well-defined need for agreement and you're clear using the model to discuss what you're discussing, you'll be more likely to keep your disagreement from becoming an argument, more likely to reach the agreement you need. Okay, so that was uh, more from a like a business perspective, right? But um, if we can just remember those rules, um, it'll be very useful for us to keep it in mind so that things don't escalate. Um, I was also, you know, watching a video of um, of a person. This this person was um, um, of American origin, African American, and he lived at a time when um, I, he, I think he recently passed away. He lived at a time when um, there was a lot of uh, white supremacy and you know all those kind of the KKK or the Ku Klux Klan uh, was really um, going around, being very active, and so on. Uh, and uh, so he, how he attended their meetings, right? Um, and went from a place of um, uh, you know, not being accepted because he was a black man, not being accepted in these meetings because they were white supremacists. So having a, a you know meeting with the leader, trying to find out what really, what is it that was bothering them? Right? What is it that led them to believe what they believe and why there was so much hatred and why there was so much violence um, against the race? So uh, he went about uh, doing that. And it was not a very easy journey for him. Right? It was not an easy journey for him. It was difficult, but he, he did it anyway. He did it despite threats to his life. He did it despite um, you know a lot of discouragements, a lot of setbacks in the journey. But he was able to win them over so that they would you know invite him for these meetings and in, 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 uh, he, would, he was able to at the, uh, you know, at, a, at a place at a certain point win them over and diffuse the whole the gang wars or the violence that was happening right So very inspiring. Uh, story, uh, our, our incident, um, a real life uh, story that we can see. So, so there's a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of things that can be done if we set our minds to saying, okay, this is something that is worth resolving. Okay, um, and this is something that that is worth putting our time and effort to resolve. Right, and it involves coming to that place of what we would agree on, defining our agreement, uh, and defining the boundary of the agreement, like we heard, and uh, and really putting our effort in uh, in following through, right? Um, so just wanted to share that. And this is a very important skill for us, that um, despite whatever our, um, let's say, our personality is, we can change, and we might be, we might be at a stage where we're saying, "Okay, I don't want to face any conflicts. I don't want to, much less, resolve it. You know, let things just run their course, right? Um, I just don't, I just don't want to be part of it. It's making me feel very unpleasant, and I want to remove myself from that kind of an environment. You know, but that, that's not going to help, right? We need to be able to." Because we are stewards, because we are maybe interested in with leadership, right? We need to take ownership of these kind of situations and step in, right? Okay. So, uh, any questions? Anything that you want to clarify? Not really. Okay. Okay. So we'll we'll stop here. We'll end it here. OK, um, thank you so much. We will meet again in our next class. All right. God bless. Bye-bye.